Okay, well, before I describe climate models, I think it's important to describe to describe what is climate. Climate is a is a um, abstract number. It's a fabrication of numbers. It basically an average of weather over a period of time. The World Meteorological Organization defines climate as an average of weather over 30 years, <laughs> high and low temperatures, things like that. Mm -hmm. And so when they talk about the global temperature, it's an average of all the temperatures high and low around the world for a year, for example, or for a month, a depending on which period. It's, mm -hmm. Climate is not something you can actually experience. It's a number. It's an abstract thing that's created by humans. Um, and so if we didn't have this numerical um, system of creating this abstract number, we wouldn't actually know that climate is changing because the amount of temperature change is so small, about a degree or so, that you wouldn't be able to determine it by human experience for the most part. I mean, if you go into a room that's 68 degrees versus 69 degrees Fahrenheit, can people tell the difference? Generally, no. But um, that's the kind of small things that climate measurements are looking for. Now, climate yeah. models are an entirely different beast. Now, I've got a graphic here that shows kind of a globe and shows how the, uh, the globe is partitioned. And um, the idea here is, is that we divide up the globe into all these tiny little sections, these, this grid of the globe, mm -hmm. and they model the atmosphere in each one of these sections from the surface vertically upward. And they put in parameters such as solar heating, uh, the amount of uh, particulates in the air, um, the circulation, um, Clouds, although clouds are not very well modeled in in, in climate models, uh, scientists are the first to admit this. They really don't get clouds because clouds are so dynamic on a on a minute to minute and an hour to hour basis. So it's really hard to get the effect of clouds into the models and yeah. get it right. Dr. Roy Spencer once noted that just about a two to four percent <laughs> change in clouds over the past 30 years would account for the kind of warming that we've seen and and nothing else would have to be in the climate models to account for that so climate models basically aggregate all these different little partials of air around the globe in these grids and then start from a starting point and then project into the future for temperature uh, precipitation so forth and so on the problem with climate models is that they're open-ended they are not verifiable completely because if you forecast 50 years into the future, how do you verify it? With weather models, for example, which we're getting very, very good at, if you make a prediction about weather for next week, mm -hmm. you know whether or not the forecast has become accurate or not. And then you can work on tuning the, the, the forecast model, the weather model, for more accuracy. And we've done that successfully over the past 30 years. And it used to be, um, and then the biggest difference you can notice on TV stations now is yeah. we used to be able to give a five day forecast and then and, and it was kind of dicey at the end of the five days. And now <laughs> and then it was a seven day forecast. And now it's up to 10 days in a lot of cases because the weather models are getting better. The climate models aren't necessarily getting better. They're actually getting worse because there's a lot of confirmation bias going into them. For example, the um, the latest AR6 report that came from the ICCC said we're relying on uh, RCP 8.5, which is a very specific climate model, and it's the worst case scenario. It's the one that says we're running off the rails in the future, temperature wise. But the problem is, is that it's relying on the amount of carbon dioxide that is impossible to produce by burning basically all the fossil fuels on the planet, we still would not get to the level of carbon dioxide increase that this model is using. And so it's been discredited in scientific circles, but they're still using it because it's now a political tool.